This is a response to Epidemic 2020's Five Questions from Two Christians for Atheists video. Anybody else viewing this should probably watch Epidemic 2020's video first if you haven't already. Link in the description. Hey guys, you seem like earnest people, so I figured I would provide you with some earnest answers from this atheist, which is me. I go by Plaster Dragon on YouTube, but you can call me Chuck. Your first question was, paraphrase, what kind of evidence would it take for you to believe in God? And by God we mean a mind that is all-loving, all-powerful, all-knowing, and eternal. It would take empirical evidence for me to believe in any sort of supernatural phenomenon or metaphysical being. But what do I really mean by that? Dictionary.com gives a number of definitions, but the closest one to what I mean is number three. Provable or verifiable by experience or experiment. Essentially that means for me to accept such a claim as truth, I require some sort of evidence I can independently verify. If you were to say, I have evidence for the existence of the Christian deity, or I have evidence for an all-loving, all-powerful, all-knowing eternal mind, these would be extraordinary claims. So I'd be prone to ask, how can I independently verify this evidence? And by that I specifically mean, what experiment can I perform to verify your evidence? Furthermore, I would demand that the evidence, and the experiment, take into account the fallibility of the human brain. Science has repeatedly demonstrated that human brains are not infallible. They can be easily tricked, fooled, or simply draw erroneous conclusions. Consider what our brains are evolved to do. They are evolved to take in sensory inputs, interpret that data, and form conclusions about the real world around us. As a result, we are wired to interpret data and see patterns in ways that enhance our survival, whether it's recognizing anger on another person's face or hearing that lion sneaking up on us in the underbrush. But what happens when you feed garbage input into a human brain? The brain does just what it has evolved to do. It attempts to build conclusions about the real world from the garbage data, and as a result you get garbage conclusions. It's exactly this nature of our fallible brains that makes us see faces in wood grain. By exploring the nature of our brain's ability to interpret visual data, we've discovered susceptibility to optical illusions. It's our fallible brain trying to make sense of the low background noise in an empty office at night that sometimes makes us think we hear distant voices. And of course, by tampering with our brain's chemistry through hallucinogens or by other means such as sleep deprivation or sensory deprivation, we can perceive things which aren't there at all. Therefore, since the brain is fallible, such evidence would have to be the sort of evidence which can be tested empirically. It can't be the sort of evidence that exists only within the brain itself, such as feelings, desires, dreams, and so forth. If you said you had a personal experience of God in your mind, I would have no direct access to that experience such that I could demonstrate it with something other than your brain creating the experience for you. No. The sort of evidence I would require would have to be something that could be measured, weighed, and recorded so that it could be reviewed at a later date by other people who would be presented with the evidence but without the conclusions to see if they would draw the same or similar conclusions. But most importantly, the experiment would have to be repeatable so that I could do it again, and again, and again, and again, and over and over. In fact, in order for me to accept the results of the experiment, it would need to be performed hundreds of times by many different people. And by people, I mean believers and non-believers. And of course, these would have to be the sort of people who know how to construct, critically analyze, and review experiments. That is, scientists. I realize it's a tall order, but a being such as you describe is a pretty fantastic creature and extraordinary claims would require extraordinary evidence. But if you could provide that sort of evidence, I'm open to the idea. After all, most atheists are actually de facto atheists, which is to say they simply lack a belief in the divine, because the claim that the divine exists is unsupported by the evidence. I don't accept the claim, but I don't deny the claim. Your deity might exist, but without any evidence I see no reason to adopt this belief any more than I would the countless other beliefs backed by countless other unsupported claims. Quetzalcoatl, the Great Spirit, Shiva, Dionysus, Thor, Yahweh, these are all largely equivalent concepts as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, question two. Is there anything I could do which would convince you that God exists? Uh, well, you could provide empirical evidence that I could verify with an experiment that takes into account the fallibility of the human brain, produces empirically measurable and verifiable results which could be repeated many times by independent scientists as previously noted. If you can't provide either such evidence or the experiment to verify it, then no, there's nothing you can do. Sorry. Is there any argument we could make that would persuade you? An argument would necessarily need to be based on empirical evidence, so there's no reason to argue if you can't back it up. If you are referring to philosophical arguments like the ontological argument, the Kalam cosmological argument, and other such arguments, no. I can't measure philosophy. Besides, 
All such arguments ultimately involve a leap to a conclusion, a conclusion that does not follow from the premise. Assuming the universe must have had a first cause, for example, does not imply that cause as the Christian God. In fact, these arguments, even if true, only imply the existence of a deistic entity, or multiple deistic entities. None of these arguments prove the existence of a specific deity, such as the deity you believe in. So I find forays into such arguments ultimately disingenuous. If you believe in Thor, for example, then you shouldn't be springing the ontological argument on me. It's only because I'm an atheist that we end up there. I hold an evidentiary worldview. If you want to persuade me, you know what you need to provide. Would you demand any less from me? For example, take your question and replace God with the Tooth Fairy. Is there any argument I could make that would persuade you that the Tooth Fairy existed? Is there anything I could do? Question 3, paraphrased, was if you realized that an all-loving God existed, would you desire a relationship with him? Hmm, possibly. It would depend on what the terms of our relationship would be. But if we were talking about a truly all-loving God, as opposed to, say, the Christian God, then yes, an all-loving God would love unconditionally. Someone who can love me for who I am, as opposed to who they think I should be, is definitely the sort of person I might want to have a relationship with. If you said yes to that question, would you want to have a relationship with him just to get into heaven, or for some other reason? If he was an all-loving God, my admission to heaven wouldn't be dependent on whether I had a relationship with him or not. It would be dependent on whether I wanted to go to heaven. If I found I liked the entity you describe, I would want to have a relationship with it because I liked it, not for whatever favors I could get out of it. This is diametrically opposed to the Christian deity, which does not motivate through love, but through fear. You and I both know what contemporary Christian dogma says about people like me. I can either have a relationship with God, or I can burn in torment for eternity. There is no third option. Given those options, I can see why many people would seek a relationship with such a god. Not because heaven would be necessarily a wonderful place, but simply because they are afraid of the alternative. Fortunately, there's as much evidence for hell as there is for the Christian deity. So I'm motivated neither by love or fear when it comes to relationships with the divine. What motivates me? Question four was, have you ever met a Christian who lives their life in such a way that it is clear that they believe in an all-loving God, meaning they live a life which is impressively kind, loving, and selfless? I've met many Christians who live their life in a way that it is clear they believe in the Christian God. I've met many who don't. I'm not sure that it follows that either belief makes one kind, loving, and selfless. For example, a selfish person might believe in an all-loving deity and seek to take advantage of that deity at every turn. Anyway, morality, compassion, and altruism have nothing to do with religion, and everything to do with being social animals. Bonobos and chimps don't believe in an all-loving God, and yet they sometimes engage in altruistic behaviors. In fact, everyone I choose to be friends with, and throughout my life I've had friends who are Catholic, Baptist, Jewish, Hindu, Muslim, agnostic, and atheist, tend to be kind, loving, and altruistic people. Their religious beliefs are generally not in evidence when they behave in such ways, as far as I'm concerned. And finally, question five. Has the presence or lack of that type of Christian had any impact on your atheism? Well, this one's easy. No, I don't base my belief or disbelief on the religious dogma or morality of other people. That three billion people believe in a specific deity is not evidence that deity exists or does not exist. Belief is not evidence. My personal journey to atheism largely began with dissatisfaction at the parameters of my faith, then exposure to other faiths and worldviews when I moved into adulthood and met new people and then careful study and reason. I ultimately came to realize that the religious beliefs I held were not held because of any particular empirical evidence, and they did not bring me happiness, or help me make sense of the world. Discarding them was the best thing I ever did for myself. The world makes a lot more sense without primitive tribal gods, and I am a far, far happier person as an atheist than I ever was as a Christian. The last time I said that to a Christian, by the way, they responded, I'm sure living a hedonistic life based entirely on seeking pleasure is a happier life than that of a Christian. While that was incredibly insulting and inaccurate, it brought home to me how little people understand what atheism is and what it means to be an atheist. To that end, I have to applaud your interest in finding out where atheists are coming from. But I caution you, knowing where I'm coming from doesn't really tell you where other atheists are coming from. I'm just one secular, humanist, liberal, democrat, de facto atheist. And I think I'm a swell guy. Pleased to meet you. If you're curious about my journey to atheism, there's a link in the description below that will take you to a blog article I wrote about it years ago. Thanks for watching.
hope you enjoyed this video.